Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is a companion video to the release of my overly complicated mini painting handle, now available on Cults 3D. There is a lot of info in this video, so I've used the YouTube chapter system to let you jump around to the information you want. Check the description box for that. And if you are a 3D print technician and have been sent the files to print, then skip straight away to the printing info. Well, anyway, in this video I'll show off what I have made, why I've made it, how I use it, and of course, the technical side of how to print and assemble it. But first, let's look at what this thing even is. For anyone who's been watching my channel for a while, you will have seen me use variations of my model painting handles that I use when painting or sculpting the models I show in videos. I can place pretty much any 28 or 32 millimeter model in the center and rotate it with three axes of rotation to orient it in any way I could possibly want for the work I'm doing. That is the biggest advantage of my design and is the very reason why I went about creating it. I can have a good solid grip holding nice and comfortably tight without having to readjust my grip every time I want to move to a different part of the model. Although you do have to be careful about models with sticky out bits like swords, spears, banners, or long weapon barrels. There is also a height adjustment. I first added this for painting banners, spears, and other tall models, but it also lets me fine tune the position, which comes in handy more often than I thought it would. Set to the lowest possible, I can paint eyes, or higher up for painting cloaks, of which I have painted many. This curved part of the ladder is contoured to be comfortable in the web of your thumb, like so. However, I have found myself holding it in a completely different way, raising my hand just a little on the grip and resting my finger forwards, often combining it with angling the model and holding out the rotating head with my thumb. This gives me an absurdly stable grip, which I can rest my entire other hand down on. I think the point where I discovered this alternate way of holding it is the point where I just could not go back to a basic painting handle. The entire modelling process was done in Fusion 360, a mechanically orientated 3D modelling software that has a great selection of tools. Although I'm using a more limited non-professional version, it's still one of the most capable software for the mechanical side of 3D modelling. Designing it wasn't without some mistakes, such as my first version having a grip so large it was uncomfortable even for my large hands. I've adjusted that, and with some people with various sizes have hands to test, all of them say it is appropriate. I also had one rare issue where the vertical adjustment dropped off the top of the ladder. I don't think this is a big deal or particularly common, but I've designed an optional stop piece to prevent that as a just-in-case measure. The process, including several iterations of the design and repairing my 3D printers multiple times, has taken far too long, far longer than it really should, and I'm glad to finally have all of that done now. The real crowning achievement of this design hinges, or rather rotates, on the crown gears. Gears with the teeth pointing parallel to the axis of rotation. When lined up and held in place, they cannot turn, but they are held by a spring, so with a little torque, they will slip out and allow for some rotation. At first, these teeth had very sharp edges to ensure they wouldn't remove unless you really wanted them to. I found it a little bit too secure, and so I've rounded the corners so that it takes a little less effort to move it. Let's discuss the parts, including the options within. Uh, this is the full set of every component, and yeah, I know I'm really disorganized. And we shall start with the base. There's a tapered and a flat topped version. The flat top is to allow a clamp to secure the painting handle to a table or workbench if you wish. I prefer the angled one as my huge hands do rest against that corner. The grip is hollow at both ends. The top is a recess for other parts of the mechanism, but the bottom is a void to add weights if you want to. I personally don't add the weights, but the option is there for you if you want. The ladder is where the mechanism rises and lowers. It is contoured for the web of the thumb, although I hold it differently. There is an optional cap on the top, which prevents the mechanism from falling off. Next, we have the joining bar, which I couldn't come up with a better name for, and bar retention. One of these springs sits in between them, pressing both the retention piece into the notches of the ladder and the crown gear of the swing arm into the corresponding gear of the joining bar, which means one spring is doing two jobs, and I'm quite pleased with that. The swing arm is next, joining the two crown gears, allowing for the two mechanical axes of rotation, but the shape of this part is specifically designed so that the 
apparatus rotates around the model rather than the other way around. This means that the model will always be in the middle and you never have to change your grip, your nice comfortable grip once you get one, to reach a different place. The last part is the model holders with a dial piece that holds in the spring. And there are three different options here. The initial version was simply flat so that you could glue your model to it or use blue tack or double-sided tape. I use blue tack and it's been very secure for all of the models I've painted with this. The second version has a recess for a magnet. This is 15 millimeters and has a cap with a recess of 10. But as with any 3D print, your recesses might not be perfectly sized, and so you can adjust and glue in whichever magnet you prefer. I personally don't magnetize my bases, but I know some people do, and I wanted to include this version for them. The third and most finely tuned version is in fact the piece that's needed the most work of the whole design, and that is the clamp that holds onto the bases. It has two tiers. The lower tier holds 25mm round bases and 20mm square, the top tier holds 32mm round bases and 25 square. As the 25mm round base remains the most common gaming base, I was tempted to only design it for that size, but by adding a second level for the second most common base, it does make it a little more versatile. I've had several people say that they would be totally okay painting a model on a sacrificial 32mm base and then transferring it over to the final base that they made separately. That's not how I usually paint, but for big fancy bases or dioramas, that actually makes perfect sense. As I continue to work on the design, based on my several hundred models painted using it, I have made some small tweaks, but I've also come up with some experimental versions of different options that I haven't fully decided on. The first is a change to how the ladder attaches to the grip. I originally went for a big elaborate dovetail, and then simplified it to just this side block, as that seems to be enough. Some of my prints without any additions actually hold pretty tightly without any kind of securing block here, and if you're gluing it then it doesn't matter either. But it's a nicer addition to help with the ladder staying put if you're not using glue. Another experimental part are the wider angled swing arms. Now, I don't think these are actually very useful, but I have included them in case someone else finds a use for them. The idea of these was that with a wider angle, you can fit a very large or a very wide model in more easily, at the cost of it not being centered anymore. After using these a few times, I'm not convinced, but again, if you find a use for them, the option is there. In the future, I'm going to come up with other ideas that I don't know of yet, and certainly people keep giving me ideas to include, and the device improves and gathers more options as we go. So now that we've discussed what it is and how it works, let's look at how to build the thing. And welcome back to those who skipped ahead, especially the 3D print technicians. One important component that I need to remind you of to send to your consigner is this, a short length of unused filament. I know you have a bin of the stuff, we all do, so throw in a hand's length, or maybe a bit more. The parts were specifically designed for FDM printing, taking advantage of layer strength and minimizing the weaknesses between the layers. Whilst I am testing some parts for SLA printing, I feel like the resin is too brittle. So looking at the STLs, I have supplied them in the orientation that I think will print the best. But we can discuss a couple of parts that might print differently because your printer will not agree with mine. The geometry of a lot of these parts will benefit from adjusting your printer settings to maximize layer adhesion, which is something my printer struggles with. General internet law would indicate the thinner layer height and slightly hotter temperature, probably a 0.1 layer height and increasing the height and temperature by 5 to 10 over what you usually use. Of course, mileage varies and 3D printers don't agree with each other. The non-printable components, and I remind you that scrap piece of filament is required, also includes springs. Springs are quite a lot more involved than you would expect on the surface. The two main springs for the rotation mechanism are quite flexible in their sizes. I wanted to have a lot of clearance for different types of spring. The specific measurements of the springs I use is a 1mm wire diameter, a 20mm spring diameter, and 15mm length. Throwing these into a DIY shop's website or just on eBay should get you the right spring, although you may have to contend with drop-down boxes to make sure you get the right one. 
If you have a bin of springs or want to buy a longer piece to cut down, you can be a little less specific. The wire diameter can change, but a thinner wire will provide a softer spring, a thicker wire will provide a firmer spring. The maximum outer diameter is 32 millimeters, preferably keep it less than 30. And the minimum inner diameter would be 17, again, preferably 18 or more, just to prevent it binding against the inner components. And you can use different lengths of spring to make your rotation stiffer or looser to your preference and to balance against the wire diameter. The other spring you will need is for the clamp version of the holder, and this is a little more specific. I did use the spring from a clicky pen, however, clicky pens are not universal. My example has a 0.4 wire diameter, a 4mm spring diameter, and 26mm in length. The diameter here is probably at the top end, you might squeeze in a 4.5mm with a bit of gentle sanding, but the length is actually very easy to change just by adding a plug of material to take up the difference in length if you only have a shorter spring. Now that we have all of the parts printed and got all the springs, you may need to sand or clean up some of the surfaces to remove support material, corners and so on and so forth as with any 3D print. The design is intended to be assembled without glue, however printers do not agree with each other and so some parts might need an adhesive. I use a solvent but super glue also works. Step 1. Place the base onto the grip with any weights you would like inside. Ensure the round hole is on top. Place the ladder onto the slot on the back of the grip with the rungs visible on the top section. We will need to take a few parts together, the swing arm, joining bar and retention plate, as well as one of the springs. They will have to be assembled so that the crown gears lock together, the spring pressing into them and the flat side of the retention plate touching the spring. Next step is to put this onto the ladder and you should need to lightly compress the spring to get this into place and that means there's enough spring pressure to hold the mechanism still. Test to ensure that the swing arm rotates freely and the vertical movement is smooth, adjusting the spring or sanding the plastic as needed. Once this is in place, the ladder cap can be fitted to the top. Next, we can attach our holder of choice through the open end of the swing arm. Ensuring that the crown gears hold together, place the spring over the tail of this piece and the dial piece on the end. Finally, we can look at the assembly of the holders. The flat version is a single piece. Use blue tack, tape or glue as you prefer. And the magnet version can be a larger magnet glued into place or a smaller one glued inside the cap. You can use your own method for ensuring correct polarity with the magnets that you use in your bases. Lastly, the clamp version, which might need sanding to ensure smooth movement before you assemble it as 3D printed parts are often rough. Also ensure that the small slots and the hole are smooth and that loose filament will pass all the way through cleanly. Place the spring into the clamp arm and then the arm onto the body of the clamp. Holding that down, push the loose piece of filament through the hole. It may be slightly fiddly to get the filament all the way through, but once it's aligned, the filament will hold the clamp together. Again, ensure that the movement is smooth and test against some bases. Now we've got the thing together and you know how to use it, I want to give some last bits of information, pros and cons, before letting you buy it to ensure that you know what you're getting. Naturally, I designed this contraption, I designed it for my own specific wants and I'm going to be favourable towards it and I like it quite a lot actually, thank you very much. It does exactly what I wanted it to. It positions the model at any angle I could want. I can paint the underside of a hat, the back of a cloak, boots and eyes without changing to some strained angle or pinching the handle. It's also entirely symmetrical so I'm not alienating 12% of the population. Now even though I built it and I'm selling STLs for you to make your own, I want to be clear about the failings of the design that I have noticed or have been raised in comments, so that you know exactly what you're getting if you do decide to purchase. As I have shown in one of my earliest videos using this design, I had a couple of issues. The sword of this model got caught in the handle's recess and bent it. Thankfully the model was saved, but it does highlight the biggest failing that I know of in the design. This recess is required so that the mechanism can be lowered for painting models upright, but can catch parts of a model that sticks out. Bayonets, swords, spears, sniper barrels, and so on. 
Another point is that it is 3D printed, a great technology to be sure, but not without its faults. PLA can become slightly pliable and warp in warm conditions. ABS is just straight up hard to print in the first place. And of course, you do have to print it or have it printed for you. And so if you don't have a printer, there's all of that malarkey of ordering parts and getting all of the options printed for you. And maybe later, if you want to a reprint or a new part or a replacement, that can be a pain. The last of the negative points I want to raise specifically is that the clamp isn't universal. It fits the most common base sizes, but it doesn't fit every possible base shape and size. And so you may have to use a sacrificial base or use the blue tack option. Finally, not so much a negative point, but a question that has been asked, particularly those worried about 3D prints being weak. How long will it last or how strong is it? Well, I've used my first one for quite a while now, probably around 300 models between sculpting and painting. I've knocked it around and dropped it in normal use, not so much abused it, but just used it quite hard. I have had one part break so far, the original swing arm, which was my first design before I added the strengthening ridges. Given my 3D printer not being so good at layer adhesion, and the fact that I was pulling on the handle at a weird angle at the time, yes it broke, I accept that, but it's an easy part to replace, and it did last over 200 models before it broke. And all the others have lost 300, like I've said. But if you are ordering parts, you might want to consider a second swing arm. It's probably not necessary, though. Now, obviously, one negative comment I'm sure I'll get people saying is, why to use this when I can just use a stick with tape on it? And sure, you can. I'm not going to stop you. If that's what helps you paint to the best of your abilities, do it and enjoy painting. Genuinely enjoy painting how you like. There's a reason why I made this, though. For those people, like me, who want to have exact control over the position of a model without changing the ergonomics of holding it, to have it upside down to paint under hats or coats, to have it sideways to paint eyes and boots, there is a reason why I call it the overcomplicated mini painting handle. It's not for everyone, it's not required for painting, and it's not going to magically make you a better painter, but it is an option, and options are good. So hopefully throughout this video I've given you all of the information you could possibly hope for about this contraption I have designed to help you decide if you want to buy the STLs or if you just wanted some information on how it works. At least I hope so given how long this video has taken to make and for you to watch even those who skipped the good bits. Were there any good bits? Let me know in the comments below. Well if I did miss anything please post questions. Please share this video around, a lot of work has gone into this one specifically, and I might actually get something out of my work, which would be nice. It's the nearest thing to merch I'll ever make. Now that's a lot of stuff said, and there's one last point I'd like to make, some special thanks. My friend, engineer and artist Alice Tyrell for advice, my friends Paul Allen and Manchester Nerfer for testing, and my friend Mini Paintstop for advice. Now I can finally say there will be a link in the description to the download page for my overly complicated model holder. I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.